This video is brought to you by Atlas VPN. Formula One is very much a game of survival of the fittest. If you don't perform, you won't last long. There are a few drivers afforded the privilege of retiring on their own terms, and many of them will leave against their will and take their skills elsewhere, either continuing to race in other series or moving on to something else entirely. 66 drivers raced in Formula One in the 2010s. As of 2023, 15 of them are still on the grid, but let's see what the remaining 51 are up to these days. Going in reverse chronological order of their last race, first up is Daniel Ricciardo. The Honey Badger is, in hindsight, perhaps mercifully no longer racing for McLaren, but the prodigal son has returned to Red Bull where he's on simulator and social media tap duty, no doubt planning a subtle stick out of the foot next time Max or Checo walk down a flight of stairs. Sebastian Vettel there were rumours that Vettel may come out of retirement immediately when Aston Martin were looking for a replacement for an injured Lance Stroll for pre-season testing and the Bahrain Grand Prix, but for the time being he's enjoying spending more time with his family and indulging in his environmental and conservation work. Based on how Alonso and Stroll drove at Sakia, he maybe regrets this decision, but I think the driving ship has sailed, though he could well return as a team principal, race director or even FIA president. Antonio Giovinazzi Since his trial and crucifixion by Alfa Romeo, Italian Jesus has died and risen again as a Formula E driver and currently races for Ferrari in the World Endurance Championship and can frequently be seen blessing the Formula 1 paddock as one of their reserve drivers. Kimi Raikkonen Kimi is staying as far away from Formula 1 as possible at all times, and is kept busy as team principal of the Kawasaki team in the Motocross World Championship, and also makes the odd appearance in NASCAR. Robert Kubica After getting dropped by Williams, Kubica joined Alfa Romeo as a reserve driver, staying there until his sponsors Orlen left in 2022, and in tandem with this did a year in DTM before moving to sports cars where he remains, winning the European Le Mans series in 2021. Daniel Kvyat After being dropped by Alpha Tauri, Kvyat did a year as Alpine's reserve driver, then a part-time campaign in NASCAR, and in 2023 has torpedoed his way into a seat with Prema in the LMP2 category in the World Endurance Championship. Roman Grosjean A comeback from Grosjean is unlikely on account of how his last race went, but he can now be found on the IndyCar grid, and like many before has been bitten by the endurance racing bug and in 2023 will also be making his debut in IMSA. Marcus Ericsson After what was a fairly mediocre Formula 1 career, Ericsson is doing pretty well for himself in IndyCar, having currently won four races, including the 2022 Indy 500. Brendan Hartley Hartley is an endurance racer at heart, and returned to the World Endurance Championship after his year and a bit in Formula 1, winning the 24 Hours of Le Mans for the second and third times in 2020 and 2022, and his third WEC title also in 2022. Now, these drivers may not have been able to protect their seats in Formula 1, but you can get started on protecting your online privacy with today's sponsor, Atlas VPN. Atlas VPN is a virtual private network provider which allows you to connect to over 750 servers in 40 different countries across the world to conceal your browsing history and protect your online data from hackers, governments, advertisers and even your internet service provider. Say you're on Netflix and you want to watch Drive to Survive, but it's not available in your country. All you have to do is open Atlas VPN on your PC or smartphone and with the click of a button you can connect to any server of your choice and you're good to go. As well as this, Atlas VPN also protects you while browsing by blocking any malicious links or ads, and will even notify you if someone is trying to steal your online data. They will also never track your Google search results, so you can browse the internet in safety. All of this can be available on an unlimited number of devices for just £1.35 per month for 3 years, plus 3 months extra from the link in the description, a discount of 83%, with a 30 day money back guarantee if you are not satisfied. But do it quick, as this is a limited time offer. Go to atlasvpn.com forward slash peterbrook and start protecting your online privacy today. Now, back to the video. Sergei Sirotkin 
Sirokin spent two years as a reserve driver for McLaren and Renault after his year with Williams, with a brief spell in GT racing, but has since retired from active racing and runs his own karting academy back in Russia. Stoffel van Dorn Van Dorn moved on to Formula E after Formula 1, winning the title in 2022, but has remained involved in the Formula 1 scene as a reserve and simulator driver for McLaren and Mercedes, and is currently doing so with Aston Martin, and also does some endurance racing on the side. Don't rule him out for a possible return. Felipe Massa Massa left Formula 1 one year later than originally planned, and did two years in Formula E, and currently races in Stock Car Brazil, and also frequently does punditry work for Formula 1. Pascal Wehrlein Another victim of the Formula 1 to Formula E pipeline, Wehrlein has been in the all-electric series since 2018, after a year back in DTM first. Jolly and Palmer Palmer's driving skills may not have been up to scratch, but since retiring from racing he has become a fantastic analyst and pundit for BBC Sport, Formula One.com and F1 TV. Paul de Resta The greatest racing driver of all time returned to DTM after leaving Formula One completely of his own volition and followed this with the Asian Le Mans series, which he won in 2019. He had run this in tandem with reserve roles with Williams and McLaren and punditry work with Sky Sports F1 until being sacked in January 2023. Jensen Button The 2009 champion's illustrious career ended somewhat anticlimactically with a one-off appearance at Monaco in 2017 where he flipped Pascal Wehrlein up on his side. Following this, he entered Super GT, winning the title in 2018, and has also dabbled in DTM, British GT Cars, Extreme E, and the Nitro Rallycross Championship, but is most familiar to most F1 fans today as a senior advisor to Williams and occasional pundit for Sky Sports F1. Esteban Gutierrez The only full-time racing campaign Gutierrez has had since being dropped by Haas in 2016 was a year in the World Endurance Championship in 2022. He was a stand-in a couple of times in IndyCar and Formula E, but he has mostly been kept busy as a development driver and brand ambassador for Mercedes, often driving their cars at showcase events such as Goodwood, and since the pandemic has also become active in eSports. Felipe Nazza Nazza is another driver whose Formula 1 career never really got going and also got massively screwed over by Sauber, but has since found success in endurance racing, winning the IMSA title in 2018 and 2021. Nico Rosberg After beating Lewis Hamilton in equal machinery, Rosberg has found a new career as a Monaco-based YouTuber and has delved into driver management, founded his own Extreme E team, does eco-entrepreneurism, and, following the end of the vaccine embargo, will now be seen much more frequently doing punditry analysis and commentary for Sky Sports F1. Rio Harianto Formula 1's first Indonesian driver was left marooned after being dropped by Manor, and initially joined the family business, printing company Kiki, and then spent two years racing GT cars in Asia in 2019 and 2020, but now runs his own restaurant. Pasta Maldonado After the repair team had eventually had enough, Maldonado spent two years with Pirelli testing the tyres and the crash barriers, and then did a year in WEC. He went on a sabbatical during the pandemic, but for 2023 has signed a contract with a hitherto unknown racing team. The Curious Case of Roberto Meri Since his short stint in Formula 1, Meri has raced in WEC, the European and Asian Le Mans series, Formula 2, Super Formula Lights, and the S5000 Australian Drivers' Championship, which any other driver would have done before Formula 1, and in the complete reverse order. Will Stevens Stevens post Formula 1 career has been spent in endurance racing, having won the 24 Hours of Le Mans in 2017 in the LMGTE AM category and again in 2022 in the LMP2 category, also winning the WEC title, and in 2023 will be making his debut in the hypercar category of Porsche. He has also been a test, simulator and development driver for McLaren since 2018, though only appears to have driven the car once. Alexander Rossi Rossi has been racing in IndyCar since 2016, when he also won the Indy 500, and has also done a little bit of IMSA, winning the Daytona 500 in 2021. Kamui Kobayashi 
Kobayashi has been very active post Formula 1. He races in Super Formula, though with limited success, but has done immensely well in endurance racing, winning the Daytona 500 twice with Cadillac, the World Endurance Championship twice and the 24 Hours of Le Mans once as a Toyota factory driver, and now acts as team principal for Toyota Gazoo Racing. Adrian Satil Satil, by contrast, has been a bit of a ghost post Formula 1. He was Williams' reserve driver in 2015, but now spends his time far away from the public spotlight buying and then crashing expensive supercars, and also has a business selling fine wines, no doubt drowning his sorrows over what was possibly more than just a friendship with Lewis Hamilton. Jean-Éric Verne Jev has been a stalwart in Formula E since parting ways of Red Bull, winning back-to-back -back titles in 2018 and 2019. He was also a Ferrari reserve driver for two years and has dabbled in both the World Endurance Championship and the European Le Mans series. Max Chilton As a Formula 1 driver, Chilton raced in the shadow of teammate Jules Bianchi. After leaving Formula 1, he did a year in Indy Lights followed by six years in IndyCar, though only got a single fastest lap to his name. He took on a testing role in Super GT in 2022 and also set the hill climb record at the Goodwood Festival of Speed in the McMurtry Spearling as the manufacturer's factory driver, but is now leaning more towards his business ventures, running two property development companies and luxury car storage company BHP Stable. Jules Bianchi Well, as I'm sure most of you know, Bianchi is no longer with us. If he were alive today, he would be 33 years old, and there is a very good chance he would be driving for Ferrari, most likely with his godson Charles Leclerc as his teammate. André Lotterer Lotterer's Formula 1 experience is barely a footnote in the story of his career. He left Formula Nippon in 2017 after 16 seasons and one title to join Formula E, where he remains, and ended his illustrious endurance racing career in 2019 with three Le Mans victories of Audi, but will be returning to the WEC with Porsche this year. Heike Kovalainen Kovalainen has had no links with any Formula 1 team since 2013, and first spent a year as BMW's test driver in DTM and then spent seven seasons in Super GT, winning the title in 2016. He has since been racing in the Japan Rally Championship and can be seen around the Formula 1 paddock doing broadcasting and punditry work for Nordic streaming service Viaplay. Charles Peak. Peake's extremely forgettable racing career ended with him as Lotus's reserve driver in 2014, while also doing a few races in Formula E, but since 2015 he has worked for French logistics company the Charles André Group, but can now be seen around the Formula 1 paddock again as in 2022 he purchased Formula 2 team Dams. Guido Vandergaard Vandergaard possibly put up more resistance to losing his seat than any other driver. After his year with Caterham, he joined Sauber as a reserve driver and then took legal action against them after he was dropped in 2015, claiming he had a seat in place, which he eventually lost. After this, he began doing broadcasting work for Dutch TV, mostly focusing on Max Verstappen, and in 2023 joined the presenting team for the Dutch brand of Viaplay. He has also been active in endurance racing since 2016, winning the European Le Mans series in the LMP2 category that year, and currently races in the LMP2 category in IMSA. Mark Webber Post to Formula 1, the world's number one number two driver spent three years with Porsche in the World Endurance Championship, winning the title in 2015. Since 2016, he has been part of the main presenting team for Channel 4 F1 and also manages Oscar Piastri. Pedro De La Rosa When De La Rosa joined HRT in 2012, the original plan was that he would drive for them for two seasons and then become team principal from 2014 onwards. After they folded at the end of 2012, however, he spent two years testing with Ferrari, then became technical and sporting advisor to the Tachita Formula E team, started doing punditry work for Spanish TV, and in 2022 became a brand ambassador for Aston Martin. Timo Glock Glock left Marussia two years early after getting bored out of his skull running around on his own with Caterham disappearing in front and HRT disappearing behind. He then joined BMW and DTM, where he remained until 2022. He has also done a little bit of endurance and GT racing, and since 2021 has been part of the presenting team for Sky Sports F1 Deutschland. Narain carter -Kayen. After Formula 1, the Cucumber did a year in AutoGP and then five years in Super Formula. 
He then did a year in Super GT, taking a surprise win, and a small campaign in the Asian Le Mans series, but has now retired from racing and runs his own casting academy back in India and a second-hand scooter dealership. Vitaly Petrov The Vyborg Rocket spent a year on the sidelines after being dropped by Caterham, and then did a single fruitless year in DTM in 2014. He moved into endurance racing in 2016, driving for SMP Racing until 2019. He also worked as an F1 race steward, sometimes clashing with Lewis Hamilton over their differing social and political views, but stepped down in 2020 after his politician father was assassinated, and has been highly critical of the widespread boycotts on Russian athletes following the invasion of Ukraine. Michael Schumacher Schumacher has not been seen in public since before his skiing accident in December 2013, and while he continues to recuperate and convalesce, his wife Karina has decided not to disclose details to the media regarding his condition and prognosis. She alone also decides who is and isn't allowed to see him, with very few people other than his family and former colleagues at Ferrari being afforded the privilege. Vague details have sometimes been given implying that he is at least aware that his son Mick has also raced in Formula 1, but no confirmed details have ever been given regarding his physical or mental state. Keep fighting, Michael. Bruno Senna Senna moved from Formula 1 to the World Endurance Championship in 2013, then did two years in Formula E before returning to the WEC, winning the LMP2 title in 2017 and retiring in 2020. He did some occasional punditry work with Channel 4 F1 and Sky Sports F1, but now does eSports, winning the RCCO World EX Championship in 2021, and is also a development pilot and brand ambassador for pioneering electric flying car series Airspeeder. Jerome D'Ambrosio D'Ambrosio was one of many ex-Formula 1 drivers to join Formula E for its inaugural season in 2014. He raced there until 2020, getting three wins along the way, and in 2020 became Deputy Team Principal of Venturi Racing and was then promoted to Team Principal in 2021, but left in 2022. Jaime Aljaswari Aljaswari was somewhat unfairly dropped by Toro Rosso at the end of 2011, and then moved around, doing a bit of Pirelli tyre testing, some broadcasting for BBC Sport, and a little bit of GT racing and Formula E before retiring from racing in 2015 after his FIA Super Licence was suspended when he fainted after the Moscow e Prix, having been under a lot of stress but also across his career being forced to keep his weight to a minimum due to his 5'11 frame. Since then, he has done a bit of karting but has mainly found success as a nightclub DJ under the alias Squire. He did this as a side project while racing but is now a household name in the Spanish club scene. Rubens Barrichello When Rubinho retired from Formula 1 at the end of 2011, he did so as the most experienced driver in Formula 1 history at that time with 322 race starts. He didn't stop racing, however, and did a year in IndyCar and then moved on to Stock Car Brazil, winning the title in 2014 and again in 2022. He intends to defend his title in 2023, whilst also wanting to delve more into endurance racing and also supporting his son Eduardo's prospective racing career, who last raced in the Formula Regional European Championship in 2022. Sebastian Buemi Buemi was dropped along with Al Jaswari from Toro Rosso in 2011. Since then, however, he has remained a part of the Red Bull family, having been a test and reserve driver ever since, but having his driving limited to demonstration runs and the occasional young driver's test. Very broad definition of young, there. He has, however, kept his racing muscles more than up to scratch, as he has won the World Endurance Championship three times, the 24 Hours of Le Mans four times, and the Formula E Championship once, also finishing runner-up three times. As of 2023, he continues to race in both series. Vitantonio Liuzzi Liuzzi was demoted from a race seat with HRT in 2012 and was only nominally connected to them and so kept himself busy with touring cars and endurance racing. He spent 2014 in Japan racing in Super Formula and Super GT, then did a small campaign in Formula E before returning to endurance racing in GT cars. He retired from racing in 2017 and now runs a chain of restaurants in Italy. Jarno Trulli Trulli abruptly bowed out of Formula 1 in early 2012, and in 2014 created his own Formula E team, which he also drove for until they folded in 2016. These days he can be found running his vineyard in Pescara, restoring classic cars, and supporting the racing prospects of his son Enzo, who in 2023 will make his debut in Super Formula Lights. Nick Heidfeld 
Quick Nick is yet another driver to move into endurance racing post Formula 1. He joined the inaugural Formula E season in 2014 with Venturi Grand Prix, then moved to Mahindra Racing in 2015 and raced there until 2018 before staying on for another three years as a reserve driver and special advisor. He made a single appearance in the World Rallycross Championship in 2022 and in 2023 has become a development driver for Prospective Electric Racing Series Ace Championship. Karun Chantok Chandok's F1 career was short and unremarkable. After this, he raced sporadically in sports cars with limited success, but has since found his mojo as a skilled pundit analyst and commentator for the BBC, Channel 4 and Sky Sports F1 coverages, also receiving the privilege of driving numerous historic Formula 1 cars, ones far better than the HRT and Lotus he drove in his career. Lucas Degrassi after his single year with Virgin, Degrassi spent three years doing tyre testing with Pirelli and also joined Audi in WEC, but since 2014 has been racing in Formula E, winning the title in 2017 and being very outspoken about environmental issues. Christian Kleon Kleon has spent his post-Formula 1 career predominantly in endurance racing in GT cars, but has also found time to perform military service in his native Austria and to present Formula 1 coverage on Austrian TV network Service TV, owned by his former team Red Bull. And last, but certainly not least, Sakon Yamamoto. Yamamoto was an archetypal pay driver who after racing for HRT tested with Virgin and did two races in Formula E, but has since entered the world of politics where he focuses on medical and social welfare and the application of motorsport technology into medical technology. He's founded his own karting circuit, made guest appearances in Super Formula Lights and Super Taikyu, and in 2021 was elected to the Japanese House of Representatives in the Tokai bloc, representing the centre-right Liberal Democratic Party. That's all for this video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram and TikTok at brooke underscore f1. A huge shout out and thank you as ever to my Patreon subscribers, especially my newest Patreon subscriber, Slothosaurus. Do subscribe to my Patreon if you want early access to audio-only versions of each video, as well as a few videos that YouTube won't allow me to put up. Remember as well to go to atlasvpn.com forward slash peterbrook to get 83% off Atlas VPN Premium for 3 years plus 3 months extra, and I'll see you all next time.